Henry, good morning. Good morning to you. How are you there? I am uh, honored to talk to you. Thank you. Me too. It's a thrill. Thank yeah. you. Uh, you're going to be coming to see to uh, actually to Monticello this uh, this weekend. It's the uh, O'Reilly Auto Parts Rod and Custom Car Show, and you're going to be meeting and greeting people for both days, both Saturday and Sunday. You ever That's been to right. Iowa, Henry? Excuse me. Have you been to Iowa? Uh, I have been to Iowa, but I don't think I've ever been to Monticello. Mm-hmm. When were you here? Uh, I was there ten years ago. Maybe. You recall what you were doing? Uh, I spoke in uh, uh, Des Moines. Okay. Uh, as a matter of fact, I spoke to a the uh, the convention of undertakers. Is that right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> How did that gig come well, about? Let I me wonder. Just say a lot of laughs. Yeah, I bet. yeah. No I kidding. Bet. No, they were lovely, lovely people from all over the country uh, who perform a very important service. I'm not sure I could do it, Mm-mm. but um, they uh, they prepare our loved ones. That's true. Now, the, the, the custom car show probably a little bit more lively, I would think. I want to say, this is, you know, listen, I'm not a car guy. Mm-hmm. You know, I drive a Lexus hybrid, mm-hmm. and I carry a sledgehammer with me to make sure it starts. <laughs> <laughs> but when I go to these car shows around the country, I am so impressed by the artistry, mm-hmm. you know, these men and women start from the ground up and they build their motorcycle or they build their automobile and the the care and the craftsmanship is like picasso of steel yeah <laughs> and the pride well the pride just beautiful beautiful machines to look at um i have so much i want to talk to you about and i guess you know, I mean, your career, obviously, you've had so much success, and it's it. you've put together a long stretch of stuff. I am most, right now, I've been watching Royal Pains quite a bit, and I've been seeing you on that. You play um, Hank and uh, Evan's father. Yes, I do. A very misunderstood gentleman. Very complicated. Well, you know, he borrowed $50,000. Uh, he didn't pay it back, and he spoke to the FBI about their friend. Mm-hmm. But aside from that, a loving man. Were you supposed to be as worked into this, uh, threaded in as you are, or is it one of those things where um, well, you were like, I'm having grew. fun? It, it kind of grew. Yeah. It was like arrested development. You know, I was invited to come there for one, and I stayed for three years. Yeah. All and those so shows I'm on hoping, USA Network are good. Uh, yes, and, and I'm hoping that we can have like a write-in campaign uh, to keep me for three years, because I love doing Royal Paints. As a matter of fact, this Thursday night is the cliffhanger ending for the winter season. Okay. And then uh, they go back and start filming again in April. Where do you uh, shoot that at, Henry? Uh, during the summer months, we are in. Uh, we shoot on Long Island. Okay. I'm in New York City, uh, and they pick me up every morning at 4.30, uh, and drive me an hour and a half to the set somewhere out on Long Island. Are you blindfolded? It day. sounds like they take you someplace you're not sure where you're going. Well, that mo- that early in the morning, I am so bleary, I don't even <laughs> <Yeah>. ask. <laughs> <laughs> you know, most of the time you just lie back and, and try and memorize your script or catch another um, hour of sleep or something. Well. Sure. We've only this. You're the second Yale trained actor that we will have spoken with this okay, year. Who is the, the first? The first would have been Adam Richman, who's in Man vs. Food. Oh my goodness, I miss him, but I watch him. He is terrific. He's, amazing. Isn't, he's got such a big personality. Isn't he mm-hmm. great? Mm-hmm. Thing is, you can. It's hard to make a living doing Shakespeare, is what I'm guessing. Well, it's really true. Um, you know, they when I was uh, younger. Nobody wanted me to be an actor. And because I was so bad in school, you know, I was bad at uh, English and math, history and science, comprehension and reading. Spelling was out of the question. <laughs> but I was great at lunch. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> and they literally said to me, you're not going to accomplish much. Mm. And um, here we are. They were wrong. You know, and then I've written 17 novels. Uh, right. about a little boy, Hank Zipser, the world's greatest underachiever, and I bring some of the novels with me to the car show. Tell, uh, how did that start, and then I Henry? Have, 
other memorabilia and people come and we hug and they buy a picture and it's a wonderful thing. Mm-hmm. So how did how did you begin with the uh, the Hank Zipser books? Um, a friend of mine's when during a lull in my acting career, and who knew that there was a lull in an acting? I career? was not aware you had one. I didn't. I wasn't aware either. <laughs> but apparently, well, you know, I'll tell you where arrogance comes in. When I played the Fon, mm-hmm. he was so big worldwide. Mm-hmm. I thought perhaps. I beat the system, and that I would go from mountaintop to mountaintop. <laughs> and then all of a sudden I looked down, and there were grass stains mm. on my jeans mm-hmm. as I slid into the valley. Mm. You, you, know, owned, a, a, you absolutely owned the planet. Well, it was an amazing, amazing time, I must say. I, I met some incredible people. I got to go to some incredible places. But you cannot be arrogant enough to think that everything remains the same Mm -hmm. forever. Did you honestly think maybe it would back then, or was it all going so fast? I actually did. And that was an important life lesson, that you have to reinvent yourself, and it's no one is going to do this for you. You have to take the bull by the horns, and you've got to do it. It's, if you want it. It seems mm-hmm. to me, and and God knows you played one of the, I, mean, I don't know, top top five or top ten most iconic characters five. in television. Top period. five. Top five we'll for that. sure. Let's say it was top five. Maybe top three. Let's go with top three. Let's go. <laughs> you are the most iconic television personality in history. That has to be seriously, unbelievably humbling. You know what? It was fantastic. I'll tell you what was humbling. Uh, that... I was the shortest guy in the room Mm -hmm. when they were auditioning. I was the least famous guy in the room. And I got this part, and it grew into this experience that I would have to live ten lifetimes Mm -hmm. in order to duplicate. Now, was the the Fonz, he wasn't going to be the the focal point at all. It was going to be Richie, right? I was the number six character on the call sheet in the morning. And it just kind of, because I remember when you started, you had just kind of a, like a windbreaker jacket before the leather jacket, yeah. right? ABC would not let me wear leather because they thought I would be associated with a gang or a crime. Mm-hmm. So I had to wear a McGregor golf jacket. Right. <laughs> right I remember that. And I, I'm here to tell you, I've said this before, but it, it is true. It is unbelievably <sighs> difficult to be cool <laughs> in puce. Even in the 50s. <laughs> It, it doesn't matter what year you're in. Right. <laughs> oh. Yeah, so, yeah, you talk about a, a character growing just like with the Royal Pains. That one certainly zoomed to the top. But what I have found over the years is that, you know, there's an adage, there are no small parts, mm-hmm. only small actors. Absolutely. Right. And that is the truth about everything. You get your door in, you get your foot in the door any way you can. And then it is up to you to create a space where you are undeniably important to the organization. Mm-hmm. It seems like, too, you know, as, as shows are successful and the arc of them as they go on a really long time, especially a period show. It, it starts to get to where the actors, I don't know if it's if you get tired of it or if it's. What, but they sort of stop wearing the apparel from the period. You start looking like the actual day you're in, you know, when yeah. things started. And you know what happens um, is you lose perspective. Mm-hmm. You know, you start, you start getting attention from the public and, and the attention. I got 50,000 letters a week. Wow. And it was so scary to leave my apartment. I bet. I read a lot of those letters. Mm-hmm. And you start to believe that you can walk on water. You start to believe you're more important than maybe somebody else is on the earth. And first of all, that's just not true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you have to keep yourself in perspective all the time. Mm -hmm. My wife and my children did that. You know, they kept me really grounded. Uh, When I thought I was too important, I used to hear, don't let that door hit you on the way out, Dad. Mm -hmm. 
That's good. One That's thing good. I wanted to ask you, too, when we were talking about the iconic part of it is that it seems to me that a lot of actors don't want to embrace it because they it's kind of like getting a lifetime achievement award where you go, I'm not dead yet. Well, you know what? It, what, what happens is you lose sight of the reality. Mm-hmm. If I did not do the Fonz, would I be on the phone with you today? Mm. There's a chance, mm-hmm. but the Fonz was the foundation of the rest of my life. Two weeks ago, I got a letter from the Queen of England. You're kidding. And the Queen of England, it said in the text of the letter, the Queen of England has graciously agreed to confer on Henry Winkler the Order of the British Empire. Wow. You're kidding me. Wow. Yeah. Congratulations. Thanks. I mean, this is like uh, an amazing, this was knocked me right out of my son. Oh, my yeah. God. So what, what, uh, tell me where does that, what happens when well, do you go do this? the Order of the, the British Empire. There are four people in the world outside of England who were conferred on with this um, award. And it was for the work that I do because I – see, here's another thing that I, that I learned in my life. I was told the Hank Zipser books would never go in England because it was too American. Hmm. And I'm going there in June because the 12th book of the 17 we wrote is coming out. And I'm getting this award from the Queen of England for the work I do with children who learn differently – children who have some sort of learning challenge Mm -hmm. and what i tell every child anywhere in the world and they all get it no matter how you learn it has nothing to do with how brilliant you are Mm -hmm. well said that is wonderful and you could grow up to have sir in front of your name from the queen of england yeah so if we meet you might have to bow. <laughs> I promise you I will. Yeah. <laughs> Undoubtedly. For a lot of reasons. I, I've, only... I look forward to talking to you. I, I... Now, are we going to see each other at the show? I certainly hope so, Henry. Yep. Saturday wow, and would Sunday. that be great? Yeah, I would love to. February 26th and 27th, you can meet Henry Winkler yourself. He's going to be there in person. Um, and now, let me we'll... ask you a question. Yeah. How's the weather? It's a little chilly. We're looking at, for the weekend, we're looking at uh, probably mid-30s. low to mid-30s. Yeah. But am, am I going to be snowed in? No. No. Oh, Absolutely fantastic. not. You missed that by a couple weeks. Cold. I've got a coat for cold. <laughs> Wear it. I will. <laughs> now, all right, let's talk about this. Yeah. In the area, mm-hmm. during my break, Yeah. the best place for food. Oh, wow. Boy, there's so many places when, when family come to visit that you, you take them. You know, um, you're in Monticello. Yeah. Um, now I can drive 15 minutes in any direction. Okay. Sure. The Amanas are are not 15 minutes. Not 15. So minutes, I know where but, you're going uh, with that, Rick. But yeah. we mustn't send him there. He might not get back in time. I know. Um, plus, you're going. You're going to probably be going by coach with Footman by by then. Yes. Or... <laughs> well, you know what? That is, that is true. They're they're sending over um, six horses. Yes. And uh, the royal coach. So it takes a little longer for you to yes, get where you're going, especially with the mud. But we're going to put the um, you know if it snowed, we were going to put the coach on sled. <laughs> you know what? Seriously, that's the biggest deal. I mean, think about that one. That's unbelievable. Well, it is amazing. Did that has because that sunk in yet? Early on, I was told I would never achieve. And two weeks ago, the Queen of England knows who I am. Right. That's crazy. Right. Okay? So let me just say, I'm a hog. <laughs> you have been blessed. <laughs> yeah. It's, you know what? That is the truth. Yeah. No matter what, my life is blessed. Mm. Oh, my goodness, do I know that. Well, you're a great actor. Mm. Obviously, you studied very hard at the beginning with whatever challenges you had. And uh, you never gave up, and look at what you've done. Well, that's what you learn. That yeah. is the lesson to be learned in life. We'll keep watching you on Royal Pains, everything this else that Thursday comes up night. for you, all the movies that come out. We'll keep looking for your books. We'll keep uh, we'll keep enjoying the Fonz forever. And now you can look for me. And we'll that's look right. for we'll you look- personally this weekend.